Hey, welcome to an episode of You Love Comic Books. This is a YouTube show I showcase my recent comic calls, comic speculations, and stuff from my collection. I got an awesome haul for you. Lots of great finds, some dialed in, some really awesome bronze silver age books at a low price, and I found some amazing rare finds. I'm gonna show you that. That was gonna be in the, towards the end of the video. So, before I get into the haul, do me a favor, smash that like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm and it ensures that more people will see these videos. If you have any questions about what you see, you like what you see, you just want to say hi or whatever, leave a comment. And I'll get back to you accordingly. You like these type of videos, combo calls, combo speculations, combo collections. You just love comic books in general. Well, guess what? You're at the right place because this channel is called You Love Comic Books. So smash that subscribe button, become part of the You Love Comic Books conversation, smash that bell to get notifications. All right, let's get into this. This is uh, a newer book, X-Men From the Ashes, A New Beginning, number one, Legacy 301. So they're going by the original, the the Jim Lee volume, you know, that, that series is starting in the early 90s. So that's cool, I'm gonna check it out. Transformers, number 10, my only other new book here. Uh, I enjoy this series. This is uh, the 10th issue. Uh, just love the art. I love the, the pacing of the story. You know, the old school Transformers and everything. So, really cool. All right. This is from my LCS. Uh, I'm just going to start it here. Uh, they have a, this is from their dollar bin. Again, like I say, they have a buy 10, you buy 12 and pay 10. So, you're getting two books for free. So, I always try to, my best to find at least 12 if I can. So here we go. Vicious Circle, number book two from Boom. And then uh, the same issue, number two. This is the cover A with the Lee Bermejo artwork cover. And this is, I think, Alex Garner. I think that's the artist. And then Vicious Circle, number one. This is the B cover, the Alex Garner. I think that's the artist. And then... This is number one, the Lee Bermejo cover. So, supposedly this is being optioned by Ryan Coogler. I don't know if it's like Universal or something. There's some hype behind this. So, I figured, and the dollar bin, why not? These books, I mean, new. Let's just show this real quick. I mean, again, the, I, I, they look like the, uh, you know, Boom is like mimicking the size it's like magazine size anyway. That's like a lot of the DC black books are like that. But I mean, like this is a $10 book new. Like, so that's pretty awesome to find in the dollar bin. Not a bad, not a bad, you know? It's like, technically, if I were to buy these new, this would have been like 40 bucks, you know? And these are picked up. They're not going for anything super crazy, but that's pretty cool. Happy to grab those. Okay. Here's some more dollar bin. Anytime I find stuff like this, I'm always like, yeah, why not? Walking Dead, Image First, number one. This is a uh, Image First dollar number one issue reprint from 2014. So that's kind of cool. I mean, this one's over 10 years old. The series, I think, started in 2003. Funny story. I probably talked about this before. If you follow this channel, whatever it is. I remember I used to shop at Mile High to get all my new comics back in the early 2000s when I lived in New York. And I remember going there and seeing Walking Dead and not getting it. I was like, mm, I'm kind of tired of zombies. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, well. But I got the Walking Dead image first for a dollar. That's kind of cool, I guess. Justice League... This is the Doomsday issue. Justice League America number 69, dudes. This is the second print. This is uh, the odd issue. So the Doomsday series, it's like, it's Man of, Man of Steel 18, Superman 74. Let me see if I can remember this. Adventures of Superman 497. Uh, Action Comics, I think 694. Yep. Or 684. Here it is. That's the other one I picked up. And then it's like Man of Steel 19, which is that awesome Doomsday vs. Superman cover. And then 75 for the death. And then this is the other issue you want to get if you want to get that full series. Anytime, I'll pick these up, um, especially in the dollar bin. Uh, I think it's always, uh, if you put these together as like a run, you know, if you want to like flip these or whatever. Uh, individually, nah, they don't go for much, but if you 
have that full run from Man of Steel all the way up to the Death of Superman, people will buy that. They want that full collection of books, and you can get a decent amount for it. So I figure any time, and they're in good condition, I'll grab them. So happy to get that. NYX, number seven. I always pick these up in the dial bins. Early appearance, of X-23. Uh, what was his name? Laura Linney? <laughs> no, that's an actress. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, Laura. I know that's her name, but I'm get, I'm getting the last name wrong. You know, only Wolverine. Uh, this is the last issue of that run that introduced her. There's an awesome fight scene in this. Always will grab that. This is pretty cool to grab in the dollar bin. Blue Beetle number three. This is the series. Uh, this is the one that spawned out of Infinite Crisis. This is the return of Peacemaker. Now, I don't know if... Uh, you know, yeah, I don't think he he was around for a while. So this is the reintroduction of Peacemaker, I guess, in uh, more modern DC. Now he had a mini series in the '80s, and then he was in Suicide Squad in the '80s. So, but this is pretty cool. Always a good issue to get. Superman, Batman, Superman number twenty three. This was a little bit of a key. This is considered the first Batman Beyond the costume, and I think Tim. Dr I have this issue. I read it. But I figured I'd pick up another one of the Dalbins It's in really nice condition. Uh, Tim Drake wears, Robin, um, wears the Batman Beyond suit. And you know what? Let's, let's, let's crack this open real quick. Why not? All right. I always love this series. It's kind of silly, but I always like the Ed McGinnis art with the Jeff Loeb writing. It's just every, everybody's so... Oh, there he is. Look at that. He's wearing the Batman Beyond suit. I just love, like, the big chunky artwork. Yeah, look at that. So that's pretty cool. I think he shows up, like, in a cameo in the issue before, but I guess this is considered the first full appearance or whatever. Um, still, pretty cool to get in the dollar bin. Happy to grab that, so. Uh, here we go. Two more from the dollar bin. I still have some awesome books to show you. Harley Quinn 25th Anniversary Special. This is from... 2017, this is the Terry Dodson variant. I figured, why not? I looked it up. It has like a $10 value. It's, that's kind of cool. And it's a great Terry Dodson cover. He did um, the um, the original series, the first run series. And then the last one from this dial bin haul here, except, like I said, I got a bunch of books that don't go anywhere. The James O'Barr, The Crow. This is from like 96. Kitchen Sink Comics. Flesh and Blood mini. Decent condition. I'd say it's like a fine plus VF minus, whatever you want to call it. So that's some spine ticks, but overall it still looks good. This is the first female crow. And I think this, that new movie, I could be wrong. That new movie that, that uh, the one of the Scars guards, Scar, I think that's the name, is playing. The guy who played the new It, he's playing the crow in this series. Um, the trailer dropped, and supposedly it's supposedly based on Flesh and Blood. I could be wrong. So that's a pretty good book to pick up for your Crow fan and stuff like that. So pretty awesome to get in the dial bin. Happy to grab that. All right. This is pretty cool. This is from a store I go to, and, uh, that has, like, a lot of toys, but they always have some good comics. The prices haven't been that great lately, but sometimes I find some interesting stuff. I don't understand how they price things. I don't question it. They'll have a book that's like $100 in the wall. And I'm like, why is that $100? I don't get it. But then they'll have something like this. And they're only charging $1.99. Avengers 101. Now, it's not a perfect condition. I mean, it's got this bend here. There's some wear. But I'd still say it's like a, a fine almost. The book is tight. The staples are tight. That's a great book to get for $1.99. Avengers number one, 101. And then this one was $3.99, but this one's in better condition. This is a little bit of a key. This is the, as you see, that's Wonder, Wonder Man in the back. He hasn't been seen since, uh, now I know he gets mentioned in like around the 50s of the series, like around the time Vision comes in, but he hasn't made an appearance since issue, his first appearance, which is like issue 9 or 10. I think it might be 10. I'm, I'm, you know what? I think it's 9. You guys can correct me. Wonder Man's first appearance. But this is his first, like, return or... I don't know. He doesn't come back technically to, like, issue 130. 
of the series. But this was pretty good. This is in really good condition. I mean, it could use a cleaning or whatever, but for $3.99 for issue 102, that's pretty awesome. Now, this one was only $1.99, but it is not in good condition. It's like, a, I would say it's good, which is in comic talks, not good. I don't know, but for a buck ninety nine, I couldn't pass it up. It is a super iconic um, cover. It's, I think it's John Buscema doing the art. I could be wrong on the cover art, but this is the in, the first issue in like the Kree Scroll War. Always wanted to get this, but you know, I don't know. It's always super expensive when I see them. I mean, that's crazy price, but. For a buck ninety nine, like I said, it's got a rip here, it's got a tear here, but overall the cover's still there, even though it's not great. The colors are still nice. I love how uh, they look over here. Uh, let's see if I can, like Quicksilver and Scar Witch and Vision, like they're just standing off to the side, and there and there's Rick Jones. So that's pretty cool. And then this is the last one I got from... I still have more books to show you guys, so don't go anywhere yet. This is the last one from this store. This one was only 99 cents. Now, this is not a good condition at all. This is Mighty Avengers number 67. I couldn't pass it up, though. It's still... It's the first cover appearance of Ultron. Now, he gets introduced, I think, in issue 56 or whatever, but this is the first time you see him on the cover, and I think it's the first appearance of this version of Ultron. But here's the interesting thing about this comic. I'm going to crack it open. Like, it's still, it's complete and everything like that. Like, if this was, like, a really nice condition copy, it could go for, like, 30 to 40 bucks easily. Uh, but I couldn't pass it up for a dollar. Like, it's funny, though. Like, even as bad as it is, like, the colors are still pretty vibrant on here, you know? Like, they're not, they're not awful. I mean, it's, <laughs> it, it, a person clean's not going to fix this book, but I don't really care. Um... But the craziest thing about it, it looks like Jack Kirby artwork. When you look at it, like face, like, but it, it let me see if I can find me a good panel. Like, like it just looks like Jack Kirby art, but it, it's not, it's Barry Smith. And Barry Smith is Barry Windsor Smith. He doesn't get called Barry Windsor Smith in the comics until like the early 70s. This book is from, let's see, it's a 15 center. So it's probably, there's 69. Let's see, it is from 1969. So I found that really interesting. They had Barry Windsor Smith doing his best Jack Kirby imitation in this. And that that's kind of awesome in itself. I didn't know about that. I always think of him like his early Conan work, you know, the introduction of Red Sonia. And uh, even like his Avengers 100, he did the artwork for that. And that one's more like akin to his style. So kind of cool to see an artist like that doing something so different. All right. This was at a record store. And this was only three bucks. I figured, why not grab it? First appearance of the, uh, the new Power Ring who ends up becoming the Green Lantern. I totally forgot her name. I do this every time. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the first appearance of this character. If you know it, her name is Justice League 31, New 52. Mention in the comments. All right. Happy to grab that. And then this is from, these are the last, oh, before I get to the last books, I'm going to show you guys something cool. This is uh, records that I got. And I always, you know, I've shown records before on, you know, on this channel. And it, it, usually I like to do, like, show records that kind of pertain a little bit to comics and stuff. Like, I'm not going to show you, like, punk or metal or whatever, but this is pretty cool. I like showing, like, usually soundtracks, as I'll show you. Ghostbusters 2 soundtrack. Like, I've never even seen this before. You always see used bins. You always see the Ghostbusters 1 with Ray Parker Jr. But you never see the Ghostbusters 2. Uh, you know, it's an okay movie. It, it's got its moments, but it's kind of, like, Nowhere near as good as the first one, but that's that's pretty awesome. So happy to grab that. And then this is the other record I picked up, and I think is perfect for this channel. The wrestling album. Let's see if I get this. This thing's in really nice condition. This is from 1985. I remember this came out when I was a kid. And this is on the time of Hulk Hogan. Uh, and you know, you got Coco Beware, you still got uh Jesse the Body Ventura. Young Vince McMahon, Randy Macho Man Savage, and they look like the Muppets to me on this cover. And then look at the, let's look at the gatefold on the inside. This is them like recording it with Roddy Piper. There's Captain Lou or 
the or a Super Mario, <laughs> uh, Hillbilly Jim, and I don't remember the Hillbilly Jim's friend or cousin or whatever. And then oh, this is so funny. I love this. I don't know who that is. The guy screaming into the mic. But there's uh, the Iron Sheik, Nikolai Volkov, and Roddy Piper. They're not having it. So yeah, that's an awesome find. Really, really nice condition. All right, let's show the rest of the books in the hall. Hit that like button if you haven't done that already. Leave a comment if you haven't done it already. Smash that subscribe button. Like, right, let's do this. This is uh, these were all Dial ninety five from Second and Charles. Dinosaurs, the graphic novel. I don't know if this. I got. I. This is like the first issue from the. Uh, the TV show, the one with all the Jim Henson puppets, the baby that says, not the mama. Happy to grab that. Guardians of the Galaxy, number 12. This is from that run that uh, predates, like, the Brian Michael Bendis with the, you know, taking over the series with the leading up to the movie. This is the one um, around the time of, like, Annihilation. This is um, Phyla, whatever her name is, Captain Marvel's sister. She becomes this other character in here, so that's a little bit of a key. And then this one I had to grab. This is the, this one was a Dial 95 too. This is the last issue of this run. And I remember a lot of people were upset. Well, a lot of people. I, mean, I don't know how many people were actually reading this series. Uh, but, you know, when they restarted it with Bendis, a lot of people were annoyed because I guess in the end of the series, they all died or something. There was like a conclusion to this. Uh... And they kind of just brought them back out of nowhere. Because, you know, they were watching that movie that was coming out in 2014. So, happy to grab that. Invader Zim, 20th, 5th anniversary, Oni Press, number one. That's a pretty cool issue. Glad to grab that for Dial 95. Pearl, number one. This book picked up a bit. It seems like a bunch of these Jinx World series have picked up a lot over the uh, past year or two. A lot of mention, like, uh, what is it? Uh, Scarlet, um... Oh, there's another one of his that also picked up. And uh, United States of something. That one, like, there's a bunch of potential shows. Who knows what's going to happen. But happy to grab that. Only a dollar ninety five. Really nice condition. All right, here are the last couple of books. John Wick, number five. It was a six-issue series. This is the cover A. And this is the cover B. So I paid $1.95 for these. These things go for, like, 20 bucks all day. I was like looking. I was like, wow, this one goes for a little more. That's a cool cover. I really like the cover B with the, you know, the Keon. I mean, that one's cool, but that one's awesome. All right, and here we go. Here's the best book of the whole. I saw this. I grabbed it. I didn't even, I was going to get it anyway because I figured I'm a fan of this stuff. But then when I, before I bought it, I kind of looked it up and I was like, wow, I couldn't believe it. Delivery. <laughs> so before I show it, I kind of already did, but smash that like button. Come on, you can do it. Hit that subscribe button. I know you can do it. Become part of the Love Comic Books conversation. Let's do this. Delivery Boy Man number one. This is a kind of an inside joke from the Futurama series where Fry made his own comic and it looked like cock-a-doo-doo. Kind of funny, though, because it does recreate the action comics number one. This is a Futurama book. That was a 2010, uh, let's see, 2010 San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. And the whole, this is basically the comic from the show. I mean, it looks like it was drawn by a five-year-old or a uh, Tumblr artist. <laughs> I kid the Tumblr artist. Look at that one. That's amazing. So this book can go for uh, hundreds of dollars. I looked it up. It had uh, sales that were in the high hundreds, like almost 200 to 300 and one sale that was close to 400 And uh, the uh, graded copies can go for like 1200 or maybe a little less. I couldn't believe that. I was going to get it anyway because I figured... Well, one, I love Futurama, but any book comic with Futurama has a little bit of value. Like even like you're just your random issue. So I, I didn't, but I didn't think it was going to be like that. That was pretty cool. So, and the awesome thing about that, these last books, like I said, they were only $1.95 each. So that's a pretty good deal. I got, there was like eight of them. I had a $5 off coupon. Uh, you know, you spend a certain amount, you get like a little $5 reward. So that brought it down to even less. So they were like, 
I don't know, $1.20 a book or something. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's pretty awesome. That's an awesome find. I love finding stuff like that. That makes my day. And I hope it makes, I hope, <laughs> I hope my uh, success in finding things has made your day as well. Um, I don't know. So yeah, <laughs> do me a favor. If you haven't done already, hit that like button. Come, leave a comment if you have any questions or want to correct anything. You know, I forgot a bunch of names throughout the episode. So go ahead and leave those in the comments. Uh, smash that subscribe button and hit that bell for notifications. You're going to see a previous video here. You're going to see a previous video there. You're going to smash that subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.